All right, so we got Assassin's Creed Mirage, a return to the roots. Let's grab the video. All right, man. We've seen uh, multiple trailers of this game. Jeez! We've seen multiple trailers of this game. When we got the opportunity to work on the next game of the series, we sat down with the rest of the core team and asked ourselves, as fans, what kind of Assassin's Creed game we'd most want to play. Many of us felt the desire to revisit some of the old imagery, narrative theme and gameplay that made us fall in love with the series. Yeah. After 15 years of journeys across the ages, from the Third Crusade with Altair to the Viking expansions with Ivor, we wanted to go back closely to where it all began and pay homage to the beginnings of Assassin's Creed. I respect Creed. that. Coming up Valhalla, we started to explore the idea of introducing a new playable hero, Bassin, and creating an experience that is a love letter to the origins of the franchise coming of age story with revamped mechanics to bring the feel of the early games into the modern day. Hey! We are going back to the Middle East, but this okay. time in 9th century Baghdad. Oh, 300 wow. years before the time of Altair, we are telling the story of Basim and how he became a master assassin. We look at the first AC games and started to wonder what exactly defined the assassin experience to us. And from there, we put all our effort into bringing our tech on the assassin fantasy. Okay. Parkour, stealth, and assassinations, okay. As a hidden one, parkour is a key pillar to the experience. True. It's like that, as your playground, we are bringing the action back to a urban environment. For parkour, bro, I love that, bro. Like the behind, games, the, behind the scenes of it, bro. I love it. Just it. to put the emphasis on comfort and fluidity. In Mirage, okay. parkour is easy to learn and to master. Our approach is closer to the SEO games, where it's all about keeping the flow and the momentum going, with the design centered around vertical. Look at the behind the Many scenes of this, from bro. Many games are making a return. We have the corner swing, the ability Ooh. to vault over objects, elevators to quickly reach high ground, and also new ingredients, such as the pole vault, allowing you to cross large gaps between two rooftops. Of course, Basim is faster bro, and hit the more girl. agile than Ivor was. And to keep that feeling, we worked our animations to reinforce the sense of speed when jumping, vaulting, and free roaming. Streets are narrower, denser, and packed with obstacles to navigate. By choosing the right path through the environment, you can move from street level to the rooftops in a blink of an eye. I'll say the that like the, the movement in this game looks way more fluid. I'll keep it real. Stealth, okay. Another core focus of Mirage is stealth. We want players to work in the shadows, plan their next move strike and then vanish Ooh. there are more ways to assassinate he did these out killing animation <laughs> some leveraging <laughs> out. The approach hey. delivering a violent killing blow hey. we also have direct throwbacks to the first games with moves like the bench assassination that you might recognize from ac2 Ooh. or the kill from the rooftop Ooh. gardens an old favorite of altair we want to encourage you to be sneaky basim has been trained to fight by the hidden ones but for him Combat is a last oh my God. and his main approach is to hunt and strike while remaining unnoticed. Yeah, we also makes sense. Our enemy AI to improve detection he has a nice shows, shirt. Making our behaviors more responsive. My shirt's all them. messed up and... New enemy archetypes will also increase the stakes. Dirty. The marksman can shoot your eagle and prevent you from using it. The spearman pokes really? stacks. And ore bearer can call for enforcements. I like That's that. Okay, now I like that. I like that. <laughs> During his training in Alamut, Basim learns the ways of the Creed from his mentor, Roshan, and his fellow hidden ones. We get to see him learn the tenets and philosophies that will guide him through his missions, like hiding in plain sight. Social stealth is making a return. We are bringing back the systemic blending with larger crowds that allow you to move undetected through the business location. Oh. But you can also bribe small factions with specific tokens in order to control AI groups and make your way through guarded areas. Huh. Oh, assassinations! The core mission is to track down and eliminate the Order of the Ancients and free Baghdad of their influence. Oh In our game, the Hidden Ones have established a network of bureaus across the city to keep an eye on the Order. The bureaus in Mirage act as gameplay hubs, from which you can take on side contracts with various objectives, from rescue missions to assassinations and help the Hidden Ones in their fight for freedom. We want you to feel truly immersed in the life of a hidden one, investigating your target's identities, tracking their movements, and sharing information with your allies. Then, when the time is right, you can- Get over here! Shadows. 
We've crafted a new investigation board which replaces our most recent quest log in Mirage. And with our black box missions, oh, that? we give you the, the, the freedom to approach key assassination missions, <laughs> however you see fit. Hey! We know how excited our community is. We also have a nice surprise for our long timers. We implemented the nostalgic visual filter as an option for those who wish to explore the game with a desaturated blue-gray color palette from the very first AC oh, game. Oh, okay, that's sick. I like this that. This is a project laid by a team of passionate people. Who then they really a took it back, though. That's crazy. Experience in mind. There is much to come, and we can't wait to unveil more about Basim's journey. <laughs> bro, like, it looks so clean, bro. This looks so clean, bro. All right, here's what I gotta say about this, okay? First of all, ignore the the, the noise upstairs, okay? This, this, this is what happens whenever, whenever you have siblings, right? Number one, I want to say, when I was younger, right? When you know, when I've heard like Assassin's Creed stuff like that, blah blah. I'll keep it real. We didn't listen, 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 listen. When I was when I was a kid, I didn't have money to buy Assassin's Creed. I'll keep it real. I'll keep it honest. You know, the only game that I truly worked for, right, that I would do anything for, was GTA. That was a game that I like worked. That I was doing chores back to back to back just to get that game. Okay, and I was like ten or eleven or twelve. Okay, I'm, was I supposed to be playing GTA Five at the time? No, but let's be real. Millions of other kids was playing that game, I, and I and I wanted to too. So let's just oh. Kids are not supposed to play that, but we're not here to talk about GTA 5. We're here to talk about Assassin's Creed. I've seen Assassin's Creed trailers and, like, you know, on the TV, on commercials and stuff like that when I was younger. Uh, I just never played it. But I did play recently. I did play Assassin's Creed. Uh, oh, my God. What is it called? Uh, oh, my God. Valhalla? Valhalla? Assassin's Creed Valhalla? I, I played that recently. It was clean. I liked it. I've always liked Assassin's Creed. It's just I've, I never really, you know, had the privilege of just playing it, uh, you know, because I, I really don't know why. I mean, there's so many games that I play. I, you know, obviously I can't play all this game at the, at the same time. Well, I, I think I could, but like, you know what I mean? I'm only one person. But at the same time, I'm really excited for this because uh, it looks really clean. Um, they're taking it back, you know, to day one. So I can kind of get like a day one feel of it, uh, even though I wasn't there for day one. I mean, I kind of was there, but I didn't play the day one. You know what I'm talking about. But, um, but yeah, so I'm glad that they're doing that. And uh, I just like how Ubisoft thought, you know what? We've been doing this for a long time. Let's just take it back to day one. Let's use some of the things that we used for the first game and put it, you know, in a new game. Um, I just was, you know, and obviously, you know, all of the, a lot of the developers, they don't have to do this. But I feel like some games need that, you know, and no names. I'm not throwing out no, no names at all. But some games need to have a throwback, if that makes sense. We all know. Just sit there and think. There are some games that need to sit down and be like, you know what? Maybe we should throw it back. Pause. <gasps> pause. Wait. No. Pause. You know what I mean. <laughs> Wait. No. 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 Pause. Pause. Wait. You know what I mean. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. Oh, I messed up. Okay. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean, right? I feel like there's some games out there. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm yeah, I'm gonna talk right over it. I'm gonna talk right over it. Okay. There's no there's no hey yo, you can A all you want. I'm not going back. But I feel like there are some gaming uh companies out there, or there's just some game titles out there that need to sit down and be like, dang man, maybe you know, our older games, you know, the games that were most popular, the games that people really liked, you know, uh, maybe we should, you know, you know, run it back and, and, you know, just maybe we should take a lot of, you know, older components that was in our older games and put on our newer games. Because let's be real, there are a lot of game titles that we all can think of right now that are struggling right now because of the new stuff, of all the new stuff. Uh, I'm not saying, you know, you know, I'm not saying take it back completely old school, but at the same time, let's be real. There were some things that worked for certain companies that they don't use now because they wanted to, you know, just innovate and stuff like that. And again, there's nothing wrong with innovating. It's just at the end of the day, when you have something that really works for you, you shouldn't you shouldn't necessarily just throw it away just because you want to change. No, I feel like you should innovate. You you should you should innovate off of that thing that that works for you. A lot of gaming companies had that thing. 
and they just completely, oh, oh okay, well, yeah, it worked for us. We're not going to use it anymore. No, if it worked for you and it really made you up there, you should use it, but you shouldn't really depend on it. You should, you know, try to innovate off of it, you know? And again, we have, there's a lot of, there's a lot of game titles that we know that could use that. Let's keep it wrong. No names, no names, you know, but NBA 2K, NBA 2K, you know, you know, NBA 2K, you could, you know, you know, no names, NBA 2K, you could use what you did, you know, a couple years ago because the game was perfect at the time. Well, it wasn't perfect. No game's perfect, but you know what I mean. The game was uh, really good at the time, and then now nobody likes the game. Nobody. I'm Even the OGs. The OGs. Your OGs, 2K. I'm talking about the OGs on YouTube, 2013, 2012. The OGs that was playing, you know, NBA 2K at the time, that's still playing now, that is suffering. Those people hate the game. Okay, so they turn the music on. I'm going to see you guys later. I'm going to turn the music off. And yeah, see you guys later.